Welcome back. So we start looking at the new AQA anthology poems for everyone who's doing the exam next year. So hopefully we'll try and get as many of these up as possible for then. And we'll also be looking at the poems from other boards. So even if this isn't from your board now, or hopefully some stuff from your board will come. And uh, in the meantime, hopefully just getting more and more used to Smile will be beneficial for you. So we start with uh, Medusa uh, by Caroline Duffy. Great poem. Uh, so the first thing we notice about the structure is the short sentences and the short sentences of obviously make things a little more powerful so for example I stared in the mirror or a really short one be terrified and they're just kind of like punchy sentences very short and just kind of really make us stop and think about what the writer commands or, or, or actually tells us in the line or what the character in this case does. Uh, we've got the questions towards the end and that's just really interesting. It kind of shows that she's reflective just before she dies because obviously with the Medusa the, uh, in the myth she had a head cut off and actually that's, I'm just going to move on to this one really quickly, that fragmented last line is actually this part here. Um, it could represent her head uh, cut off and then she's, uh, she's off to the side and then in a lot of kind of graphical image representations or even in film versions she dies with a with her with her eyes open so she's still kind of got that look at me now and obviously the snakes don't die hence people uh i think it's perseus or whoever the greek um excuse me the greek warrior was that cut her head off he's still able to use it against another monster a little later on um it's the first person dramatic monologue which uh, is quite interesting for us because we get to hear everything firsthand and uh, we know what the character is feeling obviously that's represented by the repetition of i i i etc it's free verse which uh, it gives her a free reflection to actually say exactly how she's feeling just talking through the things that she's actually thinking about and and all the things that, that are happening around her and obviously in her mind as well um and we've done the fragmented section so we move on to the meanings um we've got the idea first and foremost of the the beauty lost so you've got that bride's breath sour and obviously the bride should be something perfect and beautiful and then you've got the, the oxymoronic contrast here with the breath soured and stank and then you know it's just a really critical a uh, bunch of things on herself and the background is that of that is that she was uh, cursed by one of the goddesses and that is so she gave her the hair the, sorry the the head of hair of full of snakes and that's what made her uh, turn other people into stone um so obviously that's her beauty loss there and uh, you could probably pick that up from the last line as well of wasn't i beautiful so again it's remembering that uh, you've got the misplaced power so she's got this power and obviously she's using it quite uh, you know she can't really do anything with it um, she can't do anything positive with it anyway so here obviously you've got her killing a bee it turns into a pebble and the cat turns into a brick etc so it's all quite a depressing derelict she's lonely her power's not she, she doesn't mean to do this to people she doesn't mean to do it in these instances anyway and uh, it kind of makes you feel sorry for her in some ways you've got the idea of beauty again uh, the idea of again the bride mentioned earlier staring in the mirror and again that beautiful the idea that there was a beauty there at, at one point um, jealousy heartbroken uh, so basically we know the jealousy part because what where the story actually comes from but also here the idea we have um it's you i love perfect man greek god of my own but i know you'll etc etc so here the idea is that you know people that she she that were around her maybe she she's just thinking about what, what she's lost out on when she's actually in this state um you know she hasn't got anyone around to love so maybe she's jealous of the idea or maybe she had a lover and now she obviously can't be with them or look at them anymore and when she's in this kind of banished lonely state and that's loneliness is actually something that comes through here quite a lot and also you've got the idea of change so obviously she changed from someone beautiful into this and obviously the things that she can change into stone and obviously that's quite a lot of negative stuff and you can take some of that um things turn to stone uh you know to be representative of feelings turn to stone heart turn to stone etc so moving on to images then oh stone uh you've got all the images that are actually mentioned uh, all the uh, things that she turns into stone and actually breaks and that's quite powerful images um, you've got the beauty again that's actually mentioned so you see that quite clearly and you've also got the danger now there's obviously the danger first of all psychologically so she's got this uh, the suspicion doubt and jealousy you've also got the danger and uh, kind of the ugliness in uh, physical a physical representation in the snakes and you've also got it in the danger that's actually coming to her the shield for the heart and the sword for a tongue um, and basically maybe that sword for a tongue is actually almost like a sexual reference as well maybe that's the closest she'll get to a kiss in the way that uh, in the way that so b because of the ailment that she has turning everyone who looks at her into stone and obviously the uh, warrior who actually did conquer came with uh, a shield and made her look at herself and that's what the uh, that's what the that's what it felt 
killed her in the end. So uh, we move on then to the language, and obviously we've got the alliteration of Greek god, which makes that more punchy for the reader, just makes it really stand out, makes us think about it. We've also got the unique phrasing of the... You know, I picked that line out just because I do think it's quite strange. It's not something you normally hear, love gone bad. Uh, and that's uh, that's kind of a short breakdown of... Excuse me, that's a short breakdown of just a sentence you would normally hear, expect to hear. So uh, normally you'd say, you know, the love died or, you know, it wasn't true love, but just a love gone bad makes it sound like a yogurt. And then basically that uh, kind of ties in with, with uh, basically some of her powers to an extent. You know, she just makes things go bad and, and that's kind of tied in there that way. You've got the onomatopoeia with spattered uh, just across here. So that's talking about the... Um, excuse me the the singing bird obviously combusted and that just makes it again more powerful for the reader and just gives the idea of spreading and nothingness because it's not even like it comes down later when she talks about all the things that she hold together this one just kind of uh this one almost like falls apart uh we've also got the metaphor when we look up here about the bullet eyes for example sorry the bullet tears example uh, obviously that could be a metaphor just kind of like how sad she and lonely she is on her own and or heartbroken she is but it could also be like maybe her eyes actually do have kind of small um, arrow like drops coming out so it's an interesting double meaning to play on there so what does this make us think about well it makes us think about the effect of our actions you know what can we do to people with our looks and with our kind of considerations etc etc it could make you think about that uh, it could make us empathize with the people who are alone uh, or who are heartbroken or maybe can't uh, connect with the people that they actually want to connect with and it also makes us think about what changes people because here and in a way when she comes to the end just before she's about to die she actually thinks about she just always actually kind of gets regretful and everything uh, and it's I know it's it's kind of rhetorical on herself and she's not very uh, happy at that point but everything that's gone before it is very very negative and sad and there at least at the end when she knows the end is coming she's actually got this positive outlook just for a second so maybe the idea of death for her was some kind of release um, even though she's not dead because she's got this breakaway where she gets to say look at me now um, almost like uh, from beyond the grave etc but you can take that as far as you want so that's Medusa and uh, we'll uh, move on to some of the other poems <laughs> 